Hey guys, Mike here, and yes, my camera is currently broken. But that's not the biggest deal in the world because I don't really need a face cam for this video. So hope you enjoy learning about the greatest what if team in NBA history. Looking back at it, it feels like Tim Duncan was destined to be a San Antonio Spur for his entire life. I mean, the man is San Antonio. He was a 15 time All Star there, a two time MVP, a five time world champion. Clearly, playing out his career as a Spur was the best thing that Tim Duncan personally could have done. With that said, if he did decide to leave, Duncan would have given us one of the best big threes the NBA has ever seen. Because let's take a trip back to the 2000 season. A year before, the Spurs had won the NBA championship, so Tim Duncan had already achieved that. Which is important because it's kind of like the Kyrie Irving situation. Sometimes when a player wins a championship, they are way more willing to move on to another team. This was especially true in 2000, where San Antonio loses in the first round of the playoffs and Duncan Duncan is a literally the only good young player on the entire roster. Seriously. In 2000, a 23-year-old Duncan led the team in scoring with 23.2 points per game. The scoring leaders after him were a 34-year-old David Robinson, a 34-year-old Avery Johnson, a 36-year-old Mario Eli, and a 36-year-old Terry Porter. And yeah, we all know how this turns out. We all know that San Antonio did win four more championships, but at the time, no one knew that was going to happen. Tony Parker and Manu Ginobili weren't even on the team yet. The Spurs honestly looked like a team that was on its last leg. And so after the 2000 season happened, when Tim Duncan's rookie contract was up and there was no restricted free agency, you can see why Tim would seriously consider leaving teams. We also know he thought about it a lot because Duncan himself has said, I came close to leaving real close. And Greg Popovich remembers thinking, it was hell. You get close to a player and you don't want to see him leave. I never let myself believe he was going to stay. I was just getting myself prepared for sanity reasons. It's no fault. So you can see this what if was very close to happening and the team that caught Duncan's eye the team that was going to get him to leave San Antonio was the Orlando Magic which is very interesting because this Magic team already just so happens to be a what if story in itself. This was the Orlando Magic team that got a young Tracy McGrady and Grant Hill in the same summer. Only Grant Hill would only play in four games in the 2001 season after he was hurt. This meant that already we never were able to see what this team could have achieved which is a real shame because headed into the 2001 season, Grant Hill was 27 and had just averaged 25.8 points, 6.6 rebounds, 5.2 assists, and was a member of the second team All-NBA. Meanwhile, while Tracy McGrady only averaged 15.4 points in 2000, it was the 2001 season that saw him take a massive leap and averaged 26.8 points, 7.5 rebounds, 4.6 assists, and yeah, he was second team All-NBA in 2001 and would be a first team All-NBA the next two seasons. So, if Grant Hill had stayed healthy, he and Tracy McGrady would have formed one of the best wing duos we have ever seen. Instead, Orlando would lose in the first round of the playoffs the next three years as T-Max starred, but Grant Hill was only able to play in 47 total games and was just a shell of his former self. Which means this Orlando team already is the definition of missed potential. But this is the story of the greatest what-if team of all time, so let's make this even crazier. Because yes, Tim Duncan almost went there too. And in the next three years, Duncan would be first team all NBA every season and was the back to back MVP. Which means if Duncan had gone to Orlando and the team had stayed healthy, the Magic would have had the best player in the NBA another top five player and a top 10 player. Has there ever been a big three that has actually been that good? I mean, at the very least, a healthy and prime Duncan Hill and T-Mac would legitimately be in the conversation with Magic, Kareem and Worthy, Bird, McHale and Parrish, and LeBron, Wade and Bosh. And sure, that's a big statement to make, I understand that, but let's just take a look at this. Remember, I'm only talking about just big threes here, not teams. Anyway, in their best three seasons stretched together award-wise, Magic was on the first team All-NBA twice, Kareem was on the first team All-NBA twice, and Worthy was not even an All-Star yet. As for the Celtics, Bird was a two-time MVP and then first team All-NBA when Kevin McHale made his only first team NBA, but Robert Parrish was just an All-Star. And as for the Heat, 
yeah, LeBron was a two-time MVP, but Wade was only a one-time second-team All-NBA member, and again, Chris Bosh was just an All-Star. And just so no one takes this the wrong way, I'm not saying those teams weren't amazing, I'm not saying those big threes weren't amazing. I'm just showing you just how ridiculous it would have been to have Duncan, T-Mac, and Grant Hill all together in their primes for a three-year stretch. And going even further, I'm positive the Magic would have run through the Eastern Conference for the next decade. Remember, the East in the 2000s had finals teams like the Jason Kidd Nets, the Iverson Sixers, the young LeBron Cavs. Things were not great. The Magic would have been a super team, and you know what the only thing that stopped this from happening was? Apparently, when Orlando was recruiting Duncan, they were seriously close to signing him, so some management players and coaches had a dinner with Grant Hill and Tim. At the dinner, Grant Hill remembers, quote, I made my visit with Tim Duncan, and I was at the dinner when someone in Tim's entourage, I'll just leave it that way, asked Doc if significant others can travel on the plane. And Doc said no. And the energy at the table, my wife was like, he should have just lied. And yeah, you are hearing me correctly here. The Magic did not get Tim Duncan because Doc Rivers was not willing to say that his family could travel with the team for some games. Bruce Bowen has also backed this up, saying, One thing Greg Popovich didn't do was screw it up with Tim Duncan. I remember when Tim was a free agent, he was thinking about going to Orlando when Doc was there. When Tim went out to meet with Orlando, he asked, Can family come on flights to some games? From what I understand, Doc said no, and that's when he lost lost Tim Duncan. Doc Rivers, are you kidding me? You had the chance to get one of the best basketball players to ever live, and the only thing holding that back was that he wanted his family to travel on the plane for some games? This was a young, about to be in his prime, Tim Duncan. If he wanted his own plane to games, you get it for him. If he wanted to fly the plane, you do it. What were they actually thinking? Again, guys, camera not working, but thank you so much for watching. If you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe. I do basketball videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday around 6 p.m. Eastern. And if you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that music.